Every time I saw this screen, I was like, ah, I don't need to watch Are You Afraid of the Dark this week. Then I'd spend the next half hour under the covers, occasionally popping my head out to see the awesome 90s commercials. Anyway, this episode is about a selfish jerk named Sam and his older brother Mike. You might remember the actor playing Mike as Simon, the kid who was terrorized by that disgusting, slimy, beady-eyed, cackling silver short person in The Renegade Virus. They're out to buy a birthday present for their mom. Mike finds the perfect gift, but it turns out that Sam took the spending money and bought a video game for himself. One called Zebo's Big House. Hmm. Funny that I haven't mentioned Zebo on this list yet. Anyway, as you would expect, this doesn't sit well with Mike. He tries to return the game, but the toy shop Sam bought it from just closed. Mike tries to reason with the antique shopkeeper by saying he'll have the money the next day when the other store opens. But I guess a random kid's promise means nothing, even in Canada, the most trusting place on earth. So Mike gets fed up with Sam's crap and tells him whenever he acts bad or steals, an inanimate doll in the store named the Crimson Clown will get him. It's just something Mike says to get him to stop being a jerk. But then strange stuff starts to happen. So they get home late and have no good excuse when their mom asks where they've been. Sam, in his natural douchiness, makes up a story that gets his brother in trouble. Oh, and it turns out the clown followed them home. Well, here we go. Yeah, this was the part I didn't like as a kid. I know it's not much today, but in my defense, it's scary as shit when you're five years old. Just imagine if you were watching some public domain movie, and then all of a sudden the doors locked and a super long clown arm popped out of the TV. At that point, I would do two things. Crap my pants, and run. But it was all just in Sam's head. Or was it? Later that night, he has a nightmare that he's back at the shop, and the Crimson Clown is stalking him. But luckily he wakes up and it goes into an extreme close-up of his face, which, as we all know, always means something good in this kind of situation. Oh wait, never mind. After a little stranger danger, he breaks free and tries to wake up his brother, but shock of shocks, it's the clown. He grabs Sam by the legs and starts to drag him out the door, but fortunately they're in Canada, so that means that there's an obligatory pair of ice skates in his bedroom. After Sam is free, the clown decides to come in to handle things himself. By just kind of standing there. Menacingly! Sam finally admits that he was wrong for being so selfish, and we see that the morning sun has vanquished the horrible night. He can start the day off right by apologizing for being a douche. They return the video game and buy the gift for their mom. As a kid, I always thought the shopkeeper had something to do with it. I mean, he acts so damn weird and suspicious. Even during Sam's nightmare, we see the Crimson Clown is wearing the shopkeeper's clothes. That can be pretty confusing to a five-year-old. Now, if you want to overanalyze a 20-year-old kid's show, I think the Crimson Clown was the physical manifestation of Sam's guilt for getting his brother in trouble and ruining his mom's birthday. The only way to get rid of the clown was to tell the truth. But as big of a D-bag Sam is, I can kind of relate to him. I know what it's like growing up with an older brother. They're bigger, they've done more stuff, they know more people, so naturally you take everything they say as true. One time my older brother told me that if you mix two different kinds of shampoo then your hair will burst into flames, and I actually believed him. They can plant an idea in your head, and your little kid imagination can run away with it. 